Welcome back to another Torch Review. This time I've got an Ace Beam and this was sent in via Richard in the USA. That's a very nice gesture to get someone to send a torch in for review. So thanks to Richard for that. As he was kind enough to send this in for review, I'll put a link below to his book, which he's done on wildlife photography. He didn't ask for a plug, but it's nice to do something back to someone. So if any interest in that, do have a look below at that link. Going through the included package, spare O-rings, user guide, and we also get a micro USB cable. So pretty straightforward packaging on this. There's a protective film, just peel that off. And looking at the size, pretty compact. This is more of a palm thrower. And the green one that I've got here, that's the longest throw out of all of the lights that they offer, the three LEDs. So I switch on this is rubber, but it has a little bit too much play for my liking. That's something I might have changed. Perhaps a flat metal one would have been better. Got some knurling there on the bottom. The grip on this is actually okay, um, fits in the hand quite nicely. And you've got the grooves there just below the head. They're quite deep. I have done a runtime test later on, and it does hold its power level quite well. Just some markings on the underside. There is no magnet, just in case you're wondering on that. And they're saying they've got an LED from Osram. They don't specify which one it is, but the optical lens is a bit different to most of the ones that I've looked at. And if I turn it on at a low power, you can see there's a sort of honeycomb pattern effect on it, um, which is a bit different. And we'll see later on with the beam shots how that actually performs. Just unscrew this now to show you. And we've got the usual square cut threads. They've put a lot of grease on this for some reason, a bit more than we'd normally see. You can see there with the head at the spring, they've actually lacquered the screws on that as well. So you might have to remove that if you want to get to them. This is a 26350 with micro USB charging. So it's not the most common battery type out there. It's pretty much half the size of a 26650. And uh, just giving you a quick close up on the micro USB port. There's your spring at the bottom. As I said earlier, no magnet in there, so you don't have to worry about that in case you're wondering. And it's quite thick, the aluminium on this, a bit thicker than some of the ones I've looked at recently. So I'll just put the battery back in there and I will screw that up. The UI on this, which I'm gonna cover now, and the good news is it's very straightforward and easy to pick up. So it's a single press on off, and then you have the memory for the low, medium and high. When it's on, push and hold to cycle through those three power levels. If you wanna to get to the turbo, whether it's on or off, just hit the side switch twice quickly. Now, if you want to get to the moonlight, what you need to do is just push and hold when turning on for about three seconds. And if you keep holding it in, that will lock or unlock the torch and you'll see it flashing three times just to let you know that it's locked. You might need to do that if you're putting it in your pocket because the side switch, although there's a bit of travel on there, something could jab into that. And it's a triple press to get to the strobe mode. Here's the user guide. I put that on screen for you so you can have a look and that's got all of the different LEDs as well, the red and the white. And I did do a test on the battery and that actually came in slightly over the quoted 2000 milliamp hour and the charging speed is about three quarters of an amp although it does terminate a bit over the 4.2 volts. Quick comparison with the other batteries 26650 and 21700 and you can see it is about half the size of a 26650 so I do wish they had have included um, some additional extension tube for that that would have been a nice touch. Start off with the beam shots on the unicorn at 850 lumens. I've started off on the low level with this because it does actually have enough range to hit the shed, which is about 90 feet away. And once you kick up the power level, you'll start to see that it does spread out a bit more. And you'll see that in the beam shots, closer up ones that I've done as well. So if you're on medium or above, you've probably got enough spread with the light to use it. So it's a bit more practical than you might think, although it does have a nice tight hotspot there to give you additional range. I've done some additional beam shots as well, just to mix things up a bit. And I'll give you a few thoughts on this at the end of the video.
just to give you a quick summary now on the E10 and what I thought of it. I do quite like the form factor, it does fit quite nicely into the hand. It's a nice compact size. The couple of things to note with this, the step down is quite good actually on this. Um, it's a very gradual step down so it's not going to jump down quickly. I'll start off with the drawbacks. The first thing is I think the side switch could be a little bit better. Um, I have used nicer ones on torches. And also I do miss the fact that they didn't include the extension tube with this. That would have opened up some more options with other batteries and I think that would be useful for users to have that. On the upside though, I did enjoy using it. It does have pretty nice beam on this. You've got a good range, simple UI and it does hold its power level quite well even in the turbo mode. The green with this is also quite easy on the eyes at night. Um, I found it quite pleasant to use. Be interested to hear if you've used any of the other emitters with this. So if you've used the white one or the red one, do drop a comment below and let me know on that. Once again, thanks to Richard for sending this in and I will catch up with you in my next video, which is coming very soon.